Welcome back to the uh, Football Out West show. Your, it's episode 27. Craig and myself, Tanchi, are joined by Ivan Jolic. And uh, gentlemen, it's time to bring on our next guest. Craig, do you want to do the, uh, do the honours? Have we lost Craig? Craig, have you plugged your microphone in? Turn myself off, mate. Sorry. Yeah, done um, yeah. <laughs> yes, done it again every week. <laughs> every week so uh no listen we uh we're, we're very grateful to get craig on i know he's very busy at the moment with lots going on with uh the golden generation uh opta sports and and everything that's going but he's uh he's uh prepared to come on and give us 10 minutes of his time and and talk around a new venture that uh that he's uh he's he's looking at which uh looks very encouraging good evening craig how are you oh now it's my turn I, i've muted him sorry craig how are you craig Mate, I'm, I'm very well. I, I, I think I look a little bit out of place with all the headphones that I'm seeing kicking about there um, <laughs> in front of me. But no, no, thanks for thanks for having us on. Um, look, it has been uh, busy times, obviously, since um, kind of galvanised um, the golden, golden generation and putting a, what we believe to be a strong group together. So that's been really exciting and been plenty of debate, which is which is always good for the game, we believe. Now, Craig, we had you on, it's, it's almost about more oh, seven weeks, eight weeks ago, if not seven more. Weeks, yeah. yeah, seven weeks. So a lot has changed. And it's it's great to see that a lot of the things that we talked about back then uh, are actually starting to happen, whether it's in the coaching development side of things, the player <clears throat> development. But the big one is the administration side of things and the overall, I guess, media platform and the media landscape. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's happened is obviously the um, – the hot, cold relationship with current um, broadcaster Fox Sports and the uncertainty, not just with football, but with, um, you know, live sport in general in this country. Mm -hmm. um, but as part of the golden generation, you collectively had a very, very interesting proposal, um, which was released during the week about an FFA TV style concept. Tell us a lot more about this because I, for one, am so excited about this idea. <laughs> You've already subscribed, haven't you, Tunch? Yeah, oh, already. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you're <laughs> yeah. saying that it, you're saying that it's very, very interesting. I mean, for me, the interesting thing was that I mean, I go back to Europe pretty much every year, mm. uh, and three years ago, I spoke with a, a Scottish uh, FA vice president, and he said, "Maury, he says, mainstream broadcast is coming to an end of an era." Um, so already three years ago, for me, you know, there's there's a thought process of what's the future of our game going to look like? Um, and we know that at the moment there's a lot of discussions around about broadcast and certainly not privy to the live updated uh, version of what that is. But what we wanted to do was spark debate around about what the future of the game uh, can look like and how um, you can certainly be involved in growing your, your own platform, therefore having ownership and, and not be dictated to by broadcast. So. For example, we're talking about potentially um, winter football, you know, in the, in, the, in the future and what that looks like. If you, um, if you own your own content and therefore can make your own decisions, that makes, that makes things uh, a lot easier. And again, I think with some of the, the information that we've come out with around about the, the member federations, I want to be clear that we're, we're not saying that, that the member federations are not needed. Uh, because they've obviously done a wonderful job in the space of uh, community football, junior, grassroots, um, and the particip participation levels are high because of the work that the member federations have done. What we are saying, though, um, and, and it's pretty loud from us and also uh, from a lot of people within the football community, is the layers of administration that are currently in place um, can certainly be streamlined, which then can flow back to the clubs and the participants to be able to reduce the costs from that that's when you can go and look down the lines of that subscription model of money that's already being paid and um, but towards some platform that actually you have ownership of yeah and that part of the platform and i read the document that you uh that you uh, part of uh, came through on an email actually um uh, how nice you got uh, it yeah? you know, uh, <laughs> sorry I says, nice, you got it, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it was all around, um, you know, there, there would be a registration, a little bit like Netflix. 
Netflix. So, so I suppose that's that's uh, ultimately where what what you're thinking is you you subscribe to it and it's it's all football around Australia is is shown via this um, this this model. Is that is that correct? Yeah, and you look. I mean, look. I listen. I listen to talk sport quite a lot. So I'm sure if yeah, you've yeah. listened to that, you would have heard uh, Simon Jordan talking along the lines of this Netflix kind of scenario for the EPL for a long, long time. Um, and, and you look at in terms of what that can deliver in terms of your own content. You look at the the documentary recently with Michael Jordan and the amount of interest that that's gathered. So when you're able to to sell and drive your own content, your own stories, it just gives us a what we believe a far bigger opportunity for football in this con country to engage with all um, we keep talking about trying to get on the same page and roll, rowing in the same direction yet we're still not really engaging um, for me in, in our opinion the whole of football because there is great interest in the game i mean i, I believe from the, the the first round of the npl in victoria i believe there was over 120,000, 130,000 in terms of the, the streaming. So yeah. the, the interest is out there. Um, and it's just what that is going to look like in the, in the future. Uh, if what Fox come up with is not uh, suitable for the game to be delivered to us to a certain le level and it's going to be too heavy a hit, then it just means that maybe we're, we're looking at this particular situation a lot quicker than than maybe what we would have. So it's just more about sparking the debate with a little bit of knowledge and, and, mm -hmm. and costing behind that. And at the same time, we know that there's there's a lot of people in that uh, over-the-top streaming space now uh, that are well-equipped and ready to go. Now, we've seen actually, Craig, um, uh, up north in, in the northern states, in Queensland and, and New South Wales, this year in particular, they actually have got an NPL TV covering yep. those two states and and that was i guess driven by the two two federations but um obviously something what what you're suggesting would be obviously the whole country and and it would cover all gamuts of the sport from 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 coaching clinics and mini roos to um, magazine style shows and and what you're not um i mean that that first round table discussion the optus sport round table discussion by the end of the night when you had Mark Viduka comparing the early A League to It's a Knockout, that was brilliant entertainment. So I mean, there's there's certainly potential, great potential. But I guess that could also open up the corporate element as well, where lots of companies will 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 take out advertisements because they know that they're going to get great exposure. So is is that sort of thinking outside the square? Was that the catalyst for driving, for getting the golden generation together and, and trying to really, I guess, spread out into the football society as a whole? Oh, look, I think the, you know, and, and Jolly, you would, have been, you would have been part of this, mate. I think what, what, what it is, is you've, you've had such a long period of time where there's just a huge, there's been a huge amount of frustration um, within a lot of football people that we, we maybe at times don't feel as if the game's headed in the right direction. Uh, or is it is is are the big bold calls being made to take our game where it needs to go? So that was kind of the the original uh, discussions that, that kind of took place with um, you know the the people that are now involved in the golden generation and and look the golden generation again it's a great it's a great brand but it's a name that we didn't give ourselves uh, obviously you know back in the day and the, the media and, the, and yep. the fans of Australia have given us that name so. It was mad not to. It was mad not to run with that. But look, we just want to um, find a, a platform that gives the whole of football. And I keep saying this because I still believe that when I look at football, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of agendas. But as a political party, so to speak, I don't see too many that's out there representing the two million so-called participants in the game. Yeah, um, good point. And that that is us. You know, you talk, uh, Tonch, about the, the very first time we, we spoke on, on Optus. I think pe people then were, were clearly aware that there was, there was no agendas. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a group of people that were extremely passionate about the game, that have got different skill sets, that have had different upbringings, that have come through um, different systems within Australia at time, that have gone over and, and, and done their bit overseas. We're extremely passionate about taking football forward in this country. Uh, and... I strongly believe that the importance of being set up outside the tent maintains our voice and, and for us to be able to keep uh, applying pressure if need be to be able to drive the game forward. Because at times when you're in the inside, 
um, you can actually be muzzled as well. So your voice uh, or your ideas, uh, you know, they might be listened to, they might be heard, but if they're not executed, then you're no further forward. So we feel as if we, we're in a really good position. Uh, we're obviously all for um, the, the development um, and a great future for the game. I've been working very closely and speaking regular with James Johnson at the FFA. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we're, we're supportive of, of helping him drive the game forward. Uh, that's his big plans and what he would like to do. And we need to get everybody on board. And the Golden Generation is not an exclusive club. We want to be able to um, be open and, 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 and have many supporters and, and, and uh, members that, that feel as if that's a platform for them that helps them voice an opinion on the game. Now, we've got a question the here. Is, uh, the fact that James Johnson is on board with all of this, Craig, shows that, you know, that, that, that everybody is getting together and there, and there is a need for change and there is a want for change. So that's, that's, that's highly uh, motivating for everybody. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm. No, no, that's uh, it. And that, that's, that's right. That's one thing everybody has to step back and think, okay, this is the start of the process. What does it look like in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time? What, is it the future of football in Australia going to be a far, far better place than it currently is? And the answer to that has got to be yes. Yeah, and, it's, and that's what I'm saying. So when, uh, look, don't get me wrong, we've not, we've not got everybody that's 100% supportive of, of, of what we're doing, and, and, and that's normal. We've had hecklers all our days, and that, that certainly uh, will, not, uh, will continue. Um, but when you strip it back, it's very easy for us because... We put the game first, right? We're, we're not interested in agendas. We're not interested uh, in, in politics. We want to find the best solutions to be able to take the game forward um, and represent the whole of football. So when you scale it back and, you, and, and that's your starting point, then it's very, very difficult to, to knock and, and, and try and work against because we're speaking for the masses. Now, we've got a question here from Maxi Santich, and he's saying, uh, he, I guess he's kind of wanting to know more about the FFA TV proposal. And he, he asked the question, is it like a pay-per-view streaming service? If so, what is the likely target cost to the consumer? At what, and what content will we be able to access? Um, in, in the actual proposal, there was, a, I, I guess, a kind of a, a little bit of a, 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 a carrot that was dangled to... Um, registered players <laughs> so well, to speak. I, but, but i don't understand like so okay i see what you're saying about the dangled carrot but say for example it's 25 dollars, for example which was in that document mm -hmm. uh, per year not per month um of money that is already being paid through their registration but at the same time we're able to try and find a way to break through the administration layers to be able to help clubs and participants pay less okay yep all right so i think there was a also you know slight confusion as, as to oh, who's going to pay 25 dollars a month and if you're paying for the the epl and you're paying this you're paying. if you read the document it's very clear that it's a, a figure i've mentioned of 25 dollars per per year which is not additional it's it's kind of it's being paid it's 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 within the game anyway mm, mm. You know. And I think that's an important point that needs to be made, that it's, you know, $25 per registered player, but it, it basically comes out of the registrations. Now, like like I said at the start, it may involve entertainment shows, it might involve coaching clinics, it might involve, you know, grassroots programs, as well as some of the NPL um, behind the scenes and what you know. We see, yeah, we, we, we see in Europe, in, in a lot of um, those people that are luck, lucky to get, you know, various internet streaming channels and what you know, some of the, the countries in Europe that are much, much smaller than, 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 than Australia market-wise yeah. uh, have their own 24-7 TV channels and what you're yeah. not. And, and it's some of the reality shows that they have and anything football-related. I mean, mm. if you are a football diehard, you can literally 24-7 douse yourself in, in football content. And that's the other thing, content, football content. We talked about coaching um, um, webinars and what you're not, but... We've started seeing a lot more of that happening, but in the mainstream media, it seems to be less and less. So, okay. so, so there. I mean, like perfect. I said, I mean, we're, we're, we, what we hear and what we've been hearing regularly through COVID, mm. uh, people are desperate for content. Desperate yeah. for content. So again, if we're if we're in control or there's an ownership, um, some form of ownership whether it's 100 percent or but whether there, there's some ownership of your game your content 
then we're in a far we're in a far better position. I think that I'm not a I'm not an expertise when it comes to marketing and 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 how you can commercialize that, how you can turn that into bigger dollars. But obviously, it becomes more appealing because you're reaching the whole the whole of the community, and there's that many different components and and opportunities for advertising and sponsorship and and, and many different things. You you know you're talking about Kanga Cups, you're talking about high school football, mm. you're talking about loads of different things, and and to be able to have a backlog of, of archives, um, it's it's so important because the game's not always going to be flying, and there you know what. COVID yeah. has kind of shown us is that, you know, at times in current society, the world today, we are going to be throwing a curveball, uh, a curveball at times, and we've got to make sure that we're in a position that we're not so heavily reliant on one thing that can actually take the chair from underneath the sport. Ivan, did you have a question to ask for for, for Craig? Uh, not so much a, a, a question, but it's more just. Um... I think, and I echo a lot of sentiments from within the game, and that is that uh, it's just great to have that generation and that experience and level of expertise actually echoing and coming up with ideas because, in effect, Maury, you know that your voice is always going to be louder louder than, than the average Joe Blow, such mm. as myself and, and others. So from my end, it's, it's just a, a breath of fresh air and, and mm. well done on uh, one having you know the passion to actually do it because in the end as you know yeah. there's there's nothing in it for you uh, other than yeah. you know uh, a bloody slap in the face at the end of it but <laughs> i think it's a credit yeah. to you and the guys not only yeah. for joining forces but to have that voice because your voice really does resonate within the four walls of the ffa a lot louder than yeah. than let's say mine or, or someone else's and it's, it's not dire and i don't want to say that but it's great that we can see that level of uh, commitment from your end no, I appreciate that, Jolly. And, and just, just another thing, like, and, and probably from my learning, um, even if Craig Moore comes out and says something, I might get publicity today. We might be talking about it tomorrow. Next week, next week it's forgotten about. So for me, the importance of being able to really make a difference from my experiences and the amount of time that I've been back here in Australia and plus what I, what I knew, obviously, through coming up, you need a, you need a strong group. Um, and that's what we've formed here, and that will continually grow and get stronger. And um, that that way, we'll always be in a position where we can represent and be a voice for the game, um, and it won't get washed away. Well, I think that's, yeah, that's a, again, that's a really important uh, important uh, statement you made there. And you know, it's it's really funny how. Uh, content, we talked about content, we talk about people being able to voice their opinions. We started this show nine weeks ago yeah. for that exact reason. So people can come on and voice their opinions on stuff. We had no idea. Hand on heart, this is about the show. We had no, no idea at the start when we spoke about this how, I wouldn't say big, but how much of an influence it now has on people within Victoria and beyond who listen to the show religiously week in, week out, have their say that wasn't an option for them previously. Yeah. So us, just us doing this little tiny show on a Thursday night opens the doors for debate. Um, and, you know, that whole first episode of the Opta Sports and, and every subsequent one since um, has just been a fresh, a breath of fresh air for me to see passionate ex-professional football players who believe in the sport and want to do the right thing all coming together to try and solve the issues that face Australian football in its current state. And that can only be a massive positive for everybody in the country who's a, who's a football fan. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, that's that, that's where we come from as well. And, you know, I understand you've got to go about it in the right way. And I'm big on communication. So it's important that we, we have sort of like going, going through the right channels. And like I said, I had regular dialogue with, with James Johnson because it's important. He needs to know that... Uh, that we are a strong group and that we will be behind him. Uh, but at the same time, within the game, there, there still needs to be um, that accountability. So we, we can't always be slapping people on the back saying, well done, well done, well done, if nothing's being done. Yeah. We, you know, we, we've, got to, we've got to get things done. And, and then I'll tell you what, I'm the first person to pick up the phone and say, mate, absolutely awesome, well done. But we've got to make things happen. Things have actually um, now... 
we're in a situation where I, you know, from what was perceived to be a negative, I think can be a real positive. Um, you know, COVID has maybe accelerated things. Uh, Jolly, I mean, a nightmare for you in terms of club situation because we're still waiting to hear uh, potentially what you know what next season uh, is going to look like. Um, and then when you start to scratch about and you start to look, I mean, Spain was a club that, uh, sorry, a country that was heavily, heavily hit. Um, mm. And they're, they're already what coming back 11th, 11th of June to finish their season. They've already got a season start date for next season of the, of the 12th of September. So if there's countries like that that have been heavier hit than us, that are already organised, that have already made decisions, that have already got uh, a plan for next season, we've got to be better. Yeah. Football community is desperate for that communication. They need guidelines. Yeah. They, they need to be told when we can start, what it looks like. At the moment, it's... Um, it must be very, very difficult, especially for a new club, a new startup like like MacArthur. But even for even for the current A League clubs, um, you know, we kind of know or have an idea about what finished um, finished up before COVID, teams wise, is going to look something uh, probably a, a lot a lot different come the remainder of this season. So, still still very interesting to see what's going to play out. But we need. We need some some answers, and and, and I think yeah. those answers need to, to come through a little bit quicker. I know that's all hedged on uh, or hinged on, sorry, the the discussions with, with the FFA and Fox. But for the sake of the game, we need a resolution, and we need it quickly. Absolutely, Chance. Thank you very much for your time tonight. It has been an absolute pleasure having you both on. Uh, we've had some. Un unbelievably interesting topics and issues that have been um, brought up over the past hour or so. So um, once again, we, we really, really thank you for taking your time and returning to the Football Out West show. Craig, we must be doing something right if these gentlemen are, are happy to come back on our show. So <laughs> credit. Yeah, it's, called, it's called pestering them every five minutes yeah. on a text, mate. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah shouldn't, shouldn't have, you shouldn't have given Craig your mobile phone numbers better. That's nonetheless. Yeah. Um, we've been speaking to the, to the member of the Golden Generation, former soccer legend Craig Moore and to uh, the current assistant coach of the Matildas and MacArthur FC, Ivan Jolic. Gentlemen, once again, thank you very much and a very, very good night.